Hello and welcome. This is Kimberly from the McClay Branch Library and today I'm going to teach you how to make faux stained glass. So without further ado, let's begin. First, you're gonna to need to gather all your supplies. You're going to need acrylic paint, a paint palette or a paper plate, and then something to wash your brushes in like paper cups or plastic cups, um, a paintbrush, black puff paint, Elmer's glue, or any kind of craft glue, a frame, and if you don't have a frame that you could repurpose, an old frame you could just use for this craft, you can get one at the Dollar Tree, they're just a dollar. Um, you'll need a pencil, a ruler, a blank white paper, and a picture of your choice. So step one is to select the frame you're going to use. Um, it can be rounded like the oval one I have on the right hand side or a square or rectangular one. Uh, if you're using a square or rectangular one, that's what you'll need the ruler for if you want straight edges. Otherwise, you won't really need a ruler if you're doing a circular frame because you're gonna have all curved edges and you won't have to worry about straight lines. So first thing you wanna do is flip the frame over and remove the back cover. Um, after removing the back cover, you wanna carefully remove the glass from the frame set it aside. You want to grab some Windex and some paper towels to clean it off. Clean off both the front and the back. Don't want any smears or fingerprints or anything on it. <laughs> and then you're going to select the image going into your frame. Now it can be a stained glass template that you could find online or you could sometimes find them on Pinterest or it can just be an image that you're gonna make into your own template, uh, a photo or a clip art image. If you are making your own stained glass template and you didn't get one from online, uh, you're gonna place your empty frame on top of your blank piece of paper. And if you're not, you could go ahead and skip to step 14. So then you'll trace the inside edge of the frame onto the paper. And then set the frame aside. You won't need it for now. <laughs> and then you're going to choose your image. I found it easier to use clip art images when tracing the image and making your own template just because like the, the clip art image is just lines, whereas if you use a photograph, you gotta kind of make your own lines from the entire image. And it can be a little difficult to, to pick which lines to choose, so it's an option. You'll place your blank piece of paper on top of the picture of your choice to create your template and trace the image and add a border on the inside. You'll add more details to the border. And then you'll fill in the area between the image and the border with decorative lines just to fill up that, that empty space. So you can see on the left-hand side, there's a template that I found online of a rose. And then on the right hand side is the template that I created. You'll place the glass on top of your template. And then grab your puff paint, your black puff paint, and on a scrap piece of paper, test the black puff paint. Give the puff paint a good shake when you do, before you do. <laughs> And then you'll trace the image onto the glass with the black puff paint. Uh, you'll wanna go slow so that the black puff paint doesn't smear or overflow. Um, there were a couple instances when that, when that happened to me. If you don't mind, um, 
with that little extra bit of black puff paint. Um, you could just keep going. If you do and you care about the consistency of your lines, you can use uh, Q-tips or even toothpicks to, to try and fix that. Just be careful when you do that you don't smear it even more. Once done, you want to go ahead and set your glass aside to let the puff paint dry. Then you're going to select all your paint colors that you're going to use. Um, if you know you want to use the color straight out of the bottle, then go ahead and put it in your paint palette or on your paper plate. If not, you're going to have to mix some colors. So then you want to mix your paints after you've put them all on there. And then you're going to add glue to your colors and mix, mix it really good. Um, you want to add more glue to the paint color if you want the colors to be more transparent and more like stained glass. Um, you'll add less glue if you want the paint to be more opaque and less see-through. You'll paint your stained glass artwork. I found it easier to work from top to bottom or from the inside out and rotate it so that you don't accidentally get your hand into the paint in the areas that you've already worked. If needed, after you paint it and let it dry, go ahead and paint a second coat if it needs it and let that dry as well. After it's dry, you'll go ahead and place the glass back into the frame. Uh, you'll want to place it so that um, the side that you painted is facing you. So that should be the side that's painted and has all the black puff paint. Should be facing you so that when you turn it over and it's on the side that you view, it's all smooth and doesn't have any rough surfaces. To finish up the project, you'll either put the back cover back onto the back and fix it into place, or you could use hot glue to keep the glass in place uh, if you want the light to shine through. Um, it won't shine through really if you put the, black, the back cover into place because, because of that barrier. Once you do that, go ahead and display it in a window or on a wall and enjoy. Thank you for crafting with me and I hope you had a great time. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.